So as a man who's written many books, I understand you have a couple new projects coming up. Yes, I do. So you're not done yet, are you? Well, no. Give us a little teasers about these two books. Well, the one that I hope to uh, produce next year, publish next year, is taking the history of African American life here in Baltimore County to a higher level. And by that I mean, those other books, look, I was sort of stuck with a, with a perimeter and doing things. The grants that I got from the county said, got to start here and you must end by this date, which is the year. So I had the year to seek out people, do the interviews, do everything, publish the book in a year. So I was not able to uh, really delve as deep as I would like to. And I've been doing that over the years since I've written it. But I was so amazed to find much information about African Americans from Baltimore County that served in the Civil War. The information that I've secured came from the National Archives. I sat at home and did my research. I didn't have to go to the Library of Congress or down to uh, Maryland's Hall of Records. Uh, and I've, I've got some other people that I'm working with that are helping me on this. People like Julie V. Mathis, a retired librarian in Baltimore County. She's helped me with almost every one of them. And a lady that is on my, in my organization here, uh, Angela Walton Raji, uh, she has been a tremendous help to me. But now, with this book, I'm able to tell uh, stories about black men who ran away from their owners, joined these regiments, or one of these regiments, so that he could gain his freedom. And the, the history behind that gentleman and almost all of the 200 so far that, I, that I've uncovered, uh, each of these records started with, uh, you know, first of all, just in case people, some people are not aware of it, the state of Maryland did form six regiments of what we call United States Color Troops. And uh, six of them, the 4th, the 7th, the 9th, the 19th, the 30th, and the 39th regiments. Two of them were formed in the Baltimore area, and that's where I was able to garner most of my information. Well, when I began it, I had to look at all of the records of all those men in those six regiments. Each regiment had 1,400 men. They had a cadre of maybe seven or eight uh, white officers. Even in the white officer category, I uncovered two. One black surgeon and one black uh, a clerk. I only found those two. Uh, but there's about 7,000 records, and I begin to go through them. I learned how to really speed my process. Because each one started what was called a company descriptive record. And the first one shows where the person said he was born. I went through all of them and picked out everyone who said born in Baltimore County. Maybe a hundred of them. Then as I went, continued to go through these, those ones that said Baltimore County, then each one carried from 12 to 20 monthly records, mostly dealing with the money that he was paid each month. Or if he was wounded, if he died, if he went AWOL, if he was captured, anything about him was on these little cards. So I just, when the ball counts, I downloaded every card, every card. But as I went through these cards, I noticed that some cards, no matter how fast you go through, these big black blurbs show up. So during Baltimore County, I noticed those blurbs were from owners of slaves from, from the county whose slave either ran away or the owner allowed them to enlist. And they were stamps that they put on for affidavits and title of ownerships, agreements or that they're loyal to the United States. Uh, they are either deeds of manumissions or, or documents similar to that that uh, 
the government was able to give, they wouldn't give back the slave if he ran away, but they did compensate the owner. If he was loyal to the United States, they gave him uh, $300. And if they were not loyal, and I have seen such a case here in Baltimore County where the lady refused to sign that she didn't get a dime, nor did she get a slave back. But by seeing those big blurbs, I was finished maybe one regiment. So as I went through the other regiments, every time I saw that blurb, I stopped. And sure enough, I found a number of them that men said they were not from Baltimore County, but from some other county or the city, but they were slaves owned by people that resided in Baltimore County. And they either ran away or some of the owners rented them out to other people in other counties and they joined the service from there, but they were able to crop up. So I was able to capture quite a few of them, caught about 500 altogether. And I had information on everything that happened to them, even their wives, when they were wounded or killed in, in, in action, every one of them, infantrymen, and where they filed for the, uh, widow's pensions, where even children filed for children for their pension under children's category, or the soldier himself who may have been hurt during the war and retired, couldn't find, uh, not retired, but his service ended, couldn't find a job, he filed for his pension. That garnered an awful lot of information. So I'm well over 500 pages now. Uh, how I'm going to get money to publish this book, I don't know, but things are happening for me pretty nice. I've already had a couple of uh, donations. Uh, I got over $2,000 already, people, that want this significant part of history uh, published. So by 2015, when the 150th anniversary of the ending of the Civil War is uh, being celebrated, then I will have something from Baltimore County. And I'm sure the county, they've helped me in all the other books, so they may even give me a little, a little hand there. But that sounds good. That's one. And following that